Hello there. I didn't see you lurking about. I know what you're here for. You've come to see what new goods I've got to show you from last week's tradings, haven't you? Well, I was closed, so I don't have any new goods to show you. I'm sorry about that. But you know what I've done? I've had another look around the shop and I've found a handful of items that I thought you might want to take a look at. Some are amazing, some are just a bit of fun. So let's have a look at some of them, shall we? First up, we're going to go with a vintage Star Wars item. And this time, it's the B-Wing Fighter. As an assault fighter, the B-Wing was imagined as a potential replacement for the venerable Y-Wing Fighter, another craft that dated back as far as the Clone Wars. B-Wings played a variety of roles during the Battle of Endor, with rebel leaders forced to improvise to survive the trap sprung on them by the Empire. The name B-Wing came from the craft's appearance to a letter B. When upright, the outline of the upper half and the lower half makes a B shape. Although it's sword-like shape in attack mode, has earned it the nickname Blade Wing, which may yet be another reason for the B prefix. Now this is the tri-logo version of the B-Wing as denoted by the three logos on the box. This was probably issued by Bally Toy. Let's see the box all the way around. This particular one's got plenty of tape holding the flaps together at the end, but it is what it is. Now the B-Wing didn't see much screen time was introduced in Return of the Jedi and we saw it in a couple of shots in the Battle of Endor. Okay, we've had a look at the box. Why don't we have a look at what comes inside? First off, and yes, this is going to disappoint you, we've got the instructions. <laughs> B-Wing Fighter. Uh, yes, it does indeed say Palitoni right there as well. Also says 1984. I believe this actually did hit shelves in late 83. But I'm, I could be wrong about things like that. Okay, we've seen the paper. Let's see the toy. Turn of the Jedi. The TIE Interceptors are on a mission, but here comes the B-Wing Fighter with its adjustable wings and gravity control cockpit. It's a hit, but wait. Will the B-Wing's warning buzzer bring help, or will the Empire be victorious? Only you can decide with Star Wars toys. Here she is. Just rectify the cockpit a little bit there. So there we have the B-Wing. Now, I don't know if I can see a B in that. Let's turn it around and see how we're supposed to see a B. Anyone else see a B there? What am I missing? What am I missing that's supposed to make that look like a B? No, I can't see it. Anyway, there we are. We've got a complete B-Wing fighter. Uh, it's got the cockpit canopy there. Now, I was going to pop a B-Wing pilot in it, but when I came to have a look... There we go. When I came to have a look for a B-Wing pilot to put inside, it turns out I don't have one. I do recall selling one last week, so... Well done, that man, for nicking it from me. <laughs> <laughs> You've nicked it from this video. <laughs> so we've got the b -Wing. It's got all its stickers from what I can tell. This one's got a little bit of wear. Got stickers there, 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 there. Are any on the other side? Of course there are. There, 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 there. Plenty of stickers. Hence why we get instructions there to tell you how to place them. Landing gear working perfectly. Sometimes that sticks. It's all there. 
and it's got its guns, which are frequently missing. Frequently missing are those things. Another piece that I found that can be missing is this bit here at the back. Just sold one um, that had that missing part. Uh, but no, this one is complete, and as you know, it comes in its box as well. Now, there are electrics to the B-Wing fighter. I'm going to turn it around so you can see it a little bit better that way, I think. Yeah, that shows off a little bit better, doesn't it? Yeah, it's supposed to have working electrics. Now, I popped some fresh batteries in there, and it kind of went and stopped. So I'm guessing that the motor inside is frozen. Now you can get in there, you can set it going again, but it can be a pain in the backside to reassemble this particular thing. So I might just leave it as it is. You know, it's, it's, an, it's an 80s toy. You can't really always expect the electrics to work in these things. Uh, another feature that this has is, let's, that's how the landing gear works with that peg there. Nice working feature there. And the other feature is this, which is how the wings open. As you can see, they open quite nicely and they hold well once open. A very nice functioning piece. Overall, it's in nice condition. It does have a little bit of play wear, as you would expect. But it's not bad overall. Which was your favorite ship from Return of the Jedi? I've got to say, I actually do think that the B-Wing was quite nice. I would have liked to have seen more action from it on screen. But, um, it's not an ugly design, is it? It's quite a quite a pretty design, is that? I think so. What do you guys think? I mean, the only other ship I preferred in that film is Darth Vader's Executor, or Executor, depending how you want to pronounce it. We, we don't really get a toy of that, do we? Because it's so big. And with that, that's the Star Wars segment of this episode done. There's always got to be a Star Wars piece, hasn't there? How cool is that? Now, I don't know if you remember, but last time I showed you the Toy Biz 1989 Batmobile. Well, I thought I'd stick with the theme. And this time we're going with the Kenner 1995 Batwing. After two amazing films from Tim Burton and Michael Keaton in 1989 and 1992, 1995 gave us a new take on Batman. We got Batman Forever. And it didn't just have his Batmobile in Batman Forever. I suppose he didn't in the other two, but we got to see a new take on the Batwing. Or Batplane, depending on how you choose to call it. And this is Kenner's toy version of it. See the box? It's a beautiful condition, is this one. Nice, bright, vibrant colours, which kind of match the tone of the film as well. And Kenner forever with their play feature. I've given us hidden battle cockpit for surprise attacks and explosive rocket launcher. Now let's have a look at the back of the box. There we go. Apparently, crime cowers as Batman soars through the skies of Gotham City in the Batwing. You can fold the wings down and Batman dives through the skies of Gotham City. Double Batman's bite with the detachable battle cockpit. Rain an explosive surprise on villains with a powerful 
Rocket Blast. Figures sold separately. Well, of course they are. They always are. Okay, so we've had a quick look at the box, which you can see is beautiful. Let's have a look at what you get inside the box. Inside the box, we get cardboard. Of course we get cardboard. We always get cardboard. And we get paper. We get a very nice flyer to advertise our poster, fold-out poster, to advertise the other toys in the range. And as you can see there, they're advertising Batman the Animated Series, which was another line that Kenner was doing at the time. And Legends of Batman. Again, another line that Kenner was promoting at the time. They were very heavily promoting Batman all the way through the 90s. We get another piece of paper, which are the instructions or instructions. Tells you how to apply the labels. The labels which have never been applied. There they are. Excellent stuff. And how to attach the wings. And the rear fin. And how to play with the battle cockpit. So we've got the inserts as you can see. Let's see what comes inside the inserts. We get the main body of the bat plane, the bat wing. And that's the um, battle cockpit that it's um, talking about. And you can have a Batman figure sitting in there. I didn't think to bring one to filming. It would have been cool to show you it with a Batman in there, wouldn't it? Sorry about that. Which neatly fits inside the actual body of the bat plane, the bat wing. We have the opening cockpit. And we have the missile. Let's see how good that is, shall we? Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's as devastating as the Toy Biz Batmobile that we took a look at last time. But it's still not too bad. Now, what do we get in the other half of the box? Well, you get exactly what you would expect. You get the wings. There's one. And there's the other. Very easy to attack. And of course, we get the fin. Which just clips straight in there. And now we have a complete bat plane. Or bat wing. I keep calling it a bat plane, don't I? I do believe in the Tim Burton film they called it a bat plane. In the first one, the 89 movie. Um, we can see just about where the stickers would have been applied as well. Now underneath it's a little disappointing, it's just kind of like hollow plastic you get on the wings there. Um, considering they actually go to detail on, you know, put quite a bit of detail on the bottom of the back plane itself. I do think it's quite disappointing that the wings are just like hollow plastic. But you're always going to look at it and play with it top side up aren't you and it's um, it's a nice nice model I had one of these hanging from my bedroom ceiling for a lot of years I do think this is quite a nice nice looking design you? Now, let's have a look at how it was mentioning the wings folding down I don't recall the wings ever going into that position but that's one of the features that this toy has so what about you guys at home then did you like the batman forever batmobile and batwing or like myself was the tim burton batmobile never to be beaten let me know 
in the comments below. Who explodes with more firepower than ever? No question, it's Batman forever. It's Gotham City's ultimate battle as the Riddler's brain trap drains your brain. But Night Hunter Batman sets his sights on crushing evil every time. And Hydroclaw Robin delivers a devastating left hook. And when Batman soars in the Turbo Batwing, evil is blasted from the sky and battered with an explosive surprise. Who's the ultimate answer to crime? No question, it's Batman forever. Figures and vehicles sold separately. Now, this one's just for a little bit of fun. It's from McDonald's. It's Inspector Gadget. McDonald's have been releasing toys with their Happy Meals for decades. And people have been collecting them since they started making them. They've brought a lot of joy to a lot of people. Usually, you're quite fortunate, you get a toy with your meal, it's a different one every week, and unless you're trying to collect a whole set, it doesn't really matter if you miss one. But when the Inspector Gadget movie came out, oh it really did matter if you missed one. You see, on one occasion we got what looks like a water pistol. We got a torch. We got a pair of kiddies pliers. We got a whirly bird type thing. We got a grabby hand. And we got a spark maker. And the thing was, once you'd got to the end of the collection, you've probably guessed it, you could assemble all the pieces together in order to make yourself an inspector. Catch if it will let me. <laughs> now imagine the horror on a child's face if they found that they had missed one of these one particular week. Oh! It wasn't just a case of completing a set, oh no. You couldn't even complete the whole toy. But there we are, we have a complete Inspector Gadget from McDonald's. It's a bit of fun, it's nothing amazing, but trying to get a complete one now is not particularly easy. But we've got one right here. It does have a little bit of play away, some dirt on his face, some paint missing off his leg. But these are McDonald's toys, they were made to be played with, and this has been played with. I'm not sure <laughs> how much fun could be derived from something like this, but obviously there's certainly been some fun had. He's a charming chap, isn't he? <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> how much fun could be derived from something like this, but obviously there's certainly been some fun had. He's a charming chap, isn't he? <laughs> oh, I think I have a rock on my shoe. Hmm, let me see. Hmm? <laughs> I am hungry. <gasps> yep, there was a rock. <laughs> Now when you buy a McDonald's Happy Meal, you get one of eight really cool gadgets based on Disney's new movie, Inspector Gadget. A leg that's really a flashlight, an arm that's really an extendable grabber. Put them all together and they create one colossal crime fighter. Wowzer. Did somebody say McDonald's? Now, 
This was never my favourite McDonald's collectible series. I think my favourite goes back to the mid 80s when we had the, did they call them changeables? The Transformers? They were fantastic. They're always going to be my favourite. But what McDonald toy series was your favourite? You, everyone must have a favourite McDonald toys. Is it the T.Y. Beanie Babies? Is it the Lion King set? Is it the little dragon type things where you could take the heads and tails off and mix them about? Which are your favourite McDonald toys? Do you remember the 101 Dalmatians? Where there were literally 101 to collect and you had about two months to collect them all in? Oh, that's a lot of Happy Meals. Let me know in the comments below which your favourite McDonald's toy was. Now, this one's a little bit special. It's a beautiful piece. Not really my cup of tea, but a lot of people should like this one. We've got Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. So I think it's time that you put on a happy face. Well, this particular figure here is an exceptional and fantastic piece. But in all honesty, I don't really know what to say about it myself. So I'm going to let you take a look at it and it's going to tell you about itself because I think it speaks itself with a fairly loud voice. I suppose I can give you a running commentary. We have a box outer on the box outer. It says happy face. Let's take this sleeve off. doesn't show you anything on the back so you're not missing anything there put on a happy face now you can probably figure out what this is already just from that we have some curtains ready to be opened on the reverse of that which actually makes for quite a nice back, back stand, you know, background thing if you want to use it for this particular figure. There you go. You can see what it is. Yes, this is the Joker from the 2019 movie. Now I do have to lay this down to take the plastic clamshell off because if not, bits fall out. <laughs> and I don't want bits to fall out because I'll probably end up losing them. So expect a cut here. And there he is with that plastic top layer removed. I'm just gonna remove this as well. Now I have managed to get certain items to stay put, namely that gun. Um, <laughs> Blue tack is my friend. <laughs> Let's get these out of their little wrappers as well because I'm sure you're gonna wanna see these. There we go, all unwrapped and well, visible so this joker and yes i'm calling it joker but this figure isn't technically called joker it's called happy face because it's made by a third third party company who didn't get the license to make it so they can't call it joker but we can see what it is we know what it is and we can call it joker uh, this particular joker is made by toys era and like I say, it's a, it's a third party, but you can see the quality of this third party product. In fact, it's from a film that came out in 2019. I believe this figure landed in 2020. We're still waiting for the official of this. The official version of this by Hot Toys has actually recently been announced. So yes, it is coming but we're probably looking at about another year before we get it in our hands. So that will make it five to six years since this film came out. This item will have been in people's collections for four to five years before the official product came out. It's no surprise really that people decided that they wanted to jump on the third party bandwagon to get this because it's, it's quite a successful film, quite a well-liked version of the character. Not personally my cup of tea, 
but I understand why people like this version and they wanted it in their collection. Anyway, let's get him out of the box and have a little look at him. Now, anyone who's already got one of these may be thinking, hang on a minute, that looks different to mine. Well, it is because the guy who traded this in got an extra outfit for him. Now the proper outfit is here. Look how bright that is. Extremely bright. I dare say it's accurate to one scene or two, but yeah, we've got extra, extra outfits for him, including the shirt and the vest. We've also got an extra pair of shoes for him. Now, I'm not sure which are the most accurate, so I will leave that up to you. What do you think? I quite like the ones that he's got on, to be fair. So you've got an entire extra outfit when you buy this one from me. Uh, he's got pretty good articulation, as you would expect from any of these kind of figures. I'm not going to raise his arms or change his pose too much because I don't want to be putting creases into the fabric where they don't need to be, to be fair. He does everything that you need him to do though. wonder if you can get... Yeah, well, I, I actually do know firsthand you can get him to do the kick on the stairs. But what about the head sculpt? Because that's one of the big things when it comes to uh, these one six scale figures is the head sculpt. I'll change that pose a little bit because I can imagine some people complaining that he looks a little camp, maybe. <laughs> Although it is the Joker. So we'll start with this one. Oh, the clown mask has just dropped out. We'll leave it there actually. There we go. Look at that. I think that is a pretty damn good likeness for him, do it you? So as you can see, yes, he comes with three interchangeable heads, which you don't get that with Hot Toys. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I'll be the first to say I understand this is not Hot Toys quality. It's very, very good, but it's not quite up there with Hot Toys. I get that. I know that. Before anyone comes at me in the comments. In fact, you know what? Come at me in the comments. Because even negative comments is positive for us YouTubers. Come at me. Again, I think that's pretty much the same sculpt, just painted up with the makeup. Yeah, I think that's really, really good. Cracking sculpt. And a good paint job as well, to be fair. And then obviously there's the one that's actually on with that uh, lopsided grin, shall we say. What do you guys think to that? I think I would have liked to have seen a more maniacal looking smile as well as this though. Really nice outfit on him as well. Although like I say, with that one not actually being the Toys era one, I'm not sure which it actually is. Maybe someone in the comments can let me know. So let's get his mask scenes as that's that's there. So that's an accessory you can either put on him or he can hold. That's pretty sweet. Very cool. I like that. Very nice. And another accessory is, is a bunch of flowers. It's a party trick.
awesome sauce. And of course, I did say that Blue Tack was my friend. There we are, right off there now. We have a revolver. Say that funny just in case YouTube decide to pick up on it. That barrel does go around as well, that midsection. Not the barrel, you know what bit I mean. And yeah, it's die cast, is that solid metal? Solid metal. The blue tap back again, just so I can pop it back in the box. <laughs> and something I haven't checked to see whether or not the um, Hot Toys version is going to come with one of these or not. Oh, but it also comes with a very tiny death stick. I want to say the word because again, censorship. <laughs> but um, there you are. Sorry, I can't get it to focus any better. Uh, I'll just leave that at the bottom. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about it. Comes with two extra pairs of hands. So we've got open hands that can hold accessories. We've got fisty punchy hands and slightly more closed hands uh, one's probably for holding things like this and one's probably hold for holding things like this and then that can go between fingers as you see There you are. That is a pretty excellent figure, is that? Absolutely excellent. And I don't really know what else to say about it, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Remove him aside. You can see that he also comes with a stand. So you don't have to struggle to get him to stand up. Not going to click it in, but just goes in there, just that. So, what do you think? What do you think to um, Mr. Joaquin Phoenix? It's a lovely figure. And now it's time for my favourite item from this week's video. Yes, it's a Godzilla piece. It's Mecha Godzilla. A die cast action figure from Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla. Mecha Godzilla 2003, it says here. Now this is a strange one because I'm going to give you a little bit of history here. I have two of these in stock. I have 2003 and I have 2004. The funny thing is, the two Mecha Godzilla films were actually 2002 and 2003. So this 2003 is actually 2002, which was Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla. Uh, it does say 2002 there, it does say 2002 there. Hmm, okay, anyway. This is a Bandai action figure. Posh thing about this, and the nice thing about this, is that it's die-cast. Nice, solid 
diecast. Oh, look at that sexy thing. Doesn't it look nice? I like it anyway. I think it looks awesome. And there were some slight differences between the 2002 to 2003, or as this box claims, the 2003 to 2004. And if I do another video like this a little bit later on, and I have the 2004 still in stock, or 2003 as I will call it, I will do a little video of that for you as well, and you can compare the two. I'm not going to do them both in the same video because they are a little bit too similar. So that's why we're getting this one first. So I can't read any of that because it's all in it's all in Japanese, isn't it? <laughs> that probably says something along the lines of with opening mouth. That probably says something along the lines of with opening chest. That probably says something along the lines of with flip up guns from the rear. That probably says something to do with it having guns on its wrist. You know, because that's what the pictures kind of depict. Anyway, <laughs> let's move this aside because I've got the figure ready to show you. When you take it out of that lovely outer box, you are blessed with this. Cut the tape and you get to see the instructions which tell you how to assemble and whatever else. Now I'm wondering whether or not there should be something there. Hmm, I don't know, I suppose I'll find out as I go along, shan't I? Now I did have a quick glance in here. I haven't taken it out or anything yet. I haven't looked at it properly yet. Uh, I, I saw this, which is a sprue that has the pieces cut off it. So I was like, ooh, what's that for? And I believe it's these, which are the spines that go on the back of Mecha Godzilla. So yes, that's going to be fun because they did come numbered, telling you which one goes in which place, and now they're not numbered anymore. So yeah, it's going to be a whole lot of fun, isn't it? Let's get the main guy out himself. Move all this aside, I'm going to need the tail as well, aren't I? Oh, there's some weight to him. It's very, very, um, very, very nice bit of heft there. I like that. Right, the previous collector had had it out on display for a little while. It had a bit of dust on it, so I've just gone over it with a brush to remove some of that dust. Let's see if I can figure out where all these spines go. Go by order of elimination, I think. To be fair, they do all look the same. There we go. Okay, so there is your Mecha Godzilla, and I have to say, I am amazed at the detail on this. The detail is absolutely stunning. Look at that. Look at that. That shot alone is... Oh, yes. Me likey, me likey. Oh, this might not be going back in the cabinet after I finish filming, you know. It might be going in my cabinet at home. <laughs> ah, we'll have to see, we'll have to see. Now, where's the other pieces? Let's plug them in. Right, in order to put those things on the back, you do have to remove two of the spines. Now it doesn't tell you to remove the big spine. Ah, there we go. There we are. What do we think then? I have to say I'm, re I'm really impressed with this. It's um, quite a nice little piece. Well, it's, 
it's not little is it it's a it's a decent size detail on it is absolutely superb so let's have a look at those moving parts that it was banging on about on the back of the box shall we you know in japanese <laughs> uh, opening and closing mouth yeah it does have a turning head as well so that's cool looks like there's some posability in the neck too that's awesome There we are, ready to fire off from its chest cannon. I forget what it's called. Yep, very nice. Now there are also two cables in the box which attach this to this. I'm not going to mess around with that because they're very, very thin, very fiddly and I don't want to risk breaking anything. And that's one of the things it mentions on the back of the box as well. Yeah, and obviously these lifting up from the top there. Yeah, that's as far as they go. And they can just go back down into firing position. Got quite cool like that, actually. Looks like it's got a pair of headphones on, doesn't it? So what kind of articulation does this baby have? Got a ball joint on the shoulder, on both, obviously. Um, do we have a twist there? We have a twist or pivot, as you may call it, on the top of the elbow. Elbow has a nice little movement there. We have a twisty all the way around, 360 on the hand. No articulation on the fingers. I wouldn't expect there to be on on this, to be fair. Um, nothing at the waist. Again, you wouldn't expect it to be a twist at the waist there. I've got a ratcheted um, joint there, as well as a backwards and forwards. I've just brought the tail off. Get back on there. There we go. Back in. Oh, I've lost a piece off the tail. This has dropped out a couple of times, so it might need, I need a little dab of glue. There we are, back in. Um, we have bendy knees, only limited, but it's, it's what you would expect with, with something like this. And same on the foot, I see. The toes move a little bit as well. There's a little bit of giving the toes, to be fair. Uh, then we've got a twist there as well on the lower thigh. That's pretty cool. Um, tail, we've got a ball joint there, which pops off. <laughs> we've got, well, we've got a ball joint there, there and there, which allows for a little bit of posability, you know, but not a lot. It's all you need really for this. I think that is outstanding. I think that's absolutely amazing as well, especially considering that we're talking 2002 here, which now, it's 12 years ago. No, it isn't. It's 22 years ago. My maths. <laughs> 22 years old. It's not bad for that, is it, guys? What do you think? What do you guys think to Mecha Godzilla? And do you want to see a video of the 2003 stroke 2004? The Tokyo SOS version. That's nice. That's well and really, really nice. And that's all I've got for you this week. Uh, at least here at the shop. Maybe stick around to the end. You might see something from my own personal collection at home. We'll see. Well, thanks for watching everyone. It's always a pleasure. Hope you enjoyed it. And be sure to let me know in the comments below which your favourite item of this week's little selection was. Thanks very much. Take care. And I will catch you again next time. Now, what was I doing?
And so, as promised, here I am at home, and I'm going to show you something from my own collection. You know I'm a big Doctor Who fan, you can just about see Daleks either side behind me. <laughs> and so yes, it's going to be a Doctor Who item. This time I'm going to be sharing with you my Denny's Fisher 1976 Gladys. The Doctor would be absolutely lost without his TARDIS. And here we have the Denny's Fisher TARDIS, released in 1976. This is a particularly nice edition. It's got a very clean box. Very, very minor wear here and there. At the end of the day, this is from 1976, as I just claimed. But overall, excellent condition. This is probably the worst of it. It looks like some sellotape or a sticker has been pulled off from there. But um, I've seen an awful lot worse. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very, very nice example, is this. Certainly a very, very pretty one. But you're not here just to look at the box, are you? Oh, no, 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 no. You're here to see the toy. We'll finish off looking at the box first. There we go. Right, let's move that out of the way. To make space for the TARDIS itself. Again, this is a lovely example of the TARDIS. Not perfect, as you can see from the doors there. This sticker, which is, that's all it is. Let's um, open it so you can see. Uh, plastic doors with a sticker on the front to make up the panels. Uh, this one seems to have some kind of grease on it, which has discoloured the label. And it's it's not it's got a bit of a crease in it there as well it's, it's lifted a little bit so at some point i will look at replacing this tardis door but um this has always been a favorite toy of mine there's the velcro in there that has dropped out of there you see a little bit of glue will pop that back to how it should be. Mm -hmm. And do you know why there's Velcro? That's so that it holds the Doctor figure in place when you pop it in there. Anyway, let's have a look at this uh, all the way around first. Before we start talking about what it's supposed to do. <laughs> uh, as you can see, the rest of it is, apart from that sticker, the rest of it is in lovely condition. It's pristine. Otherwise... It's certainly a very, very nice one. Uh, we do have the lamp on top, which you use to turn it. That's in lovely condition. Uh, this is often broken. But on this one, it's it's not. So yeah, it's, uh, to, to give it a, a, a look like it's lighting up and flashing, it comes with like a reflective mirror on top there. Simple, yet effective. Now, what good is a TARDIS without the intrepid galactic travelling Time Lord himself and here we have one this one is uh, it's a lovely condition of the the most damage this has and this is probably from being inside the box is a little bit of paint wear just there something and nothing there we go 
Uh, he is complete as well. I have his hat and screwdriver here. But this baggie, uh, it's still sealed. So I'm not going to be opening it up just to pop the hat on his head and the screwdriver in his hand. I'm going to keep it sealed. Anyway, the Doctor can be placed inside the TARDIS. We can close the doors. And I can't remember which button it is you press. Let's say it's the red one. I don't know. I don't know. There we are. Is that right? And... Makes... Our Doctor. <gasps> Disappear. Oh, he's gone. Where could he possibly be? Oh, well, if we press the green button and spin it around, then he will return to us. And there he is. <laughs> very, very simple. It is what it is. It's nothing great, but I, I love it. It's a fantastic toy. I, I, I think so, anyway. I may be biased as a bit of a classic Doctor Who fan, but yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> I love this toy. It's also one of the earliest Doctor Who toys I ever added to my collection. This isn't it. This is a replacement I got after letting mine go many years ago in order to fund opening the shop in the first place. But I'm happy to say that I've managed to replace it with one that was in better condition than my original. But... um. Yeah, it's um, it, it, it's certainly a favourite of mine, is this one. Let's have Mr. Baker back out of there. And yeah, the Velcro, which should be stuck on there, the whole point of that is so that it stick to his coat, so that he doesn't actually fall out of that and jam the whole mechanism up. That's, that's the point of that. It's a cracking toy, though. A simple toy of more civilised times, shall we say. And that, uh, that particular Doctor as well, he does come with his original box, which is also a very nice one. A little bit of a tear just there. I'm not going to push it any further than that, though. Uh, but usually this, cr this card here normally folded around and there's no creasing there at all. It's a lovely, lovely example is that one. Very, very nice. Sadly, I don't have any others in the range. I only have Doctor Who and the TARDIS. I would like to complete this, this range, but I'd also like them to be in similar condition to what these two are and that's going to prove to be very, very difficult. Well, let me know if you've got any of these in really good condition that you'd be willing to part with, won't you? <laughs> so let me know in the comments below what your favorite vintage Doctor Who toy is. It'd be nice to get that conversation going. Okay. And so, yeah, there was a nice little surprise at the end there with the addition of the fourth Doctor figure. Well, it wasn't called the fourth Doctor, was it? It was just Doctor Who. Of course. Tom Baker. Yes. Okay, well, thank you all for watching, and hopefully, I'll have something else to show you very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.